Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. I apologize about my absence. Life just got a little busy, but I'm back today. I wanted to bring you guys along. Let me go over today's agenda basically and what I'm trying to accomplish. So tonight is college football night and my family's all getting together and their two teams are playing head to head and going against each other. So it's kind of like a rivalry game, I guess. So everyone's coming together. We're gonna have dinner together and the theme for tonight's dinner is Italian. So since my husband and I are vegan, obviously I have to make us a separate meal. They're all having lasagna and obviously I wanna make sure we're having Italian too so we could try to fit in as best as possible. So I'll be making my famous basil pesto pasta with you guys today and the ingredients will all be linked in the description section down below. This is my recipe. This is one of my favorite recipes. We cook this like once a week in my home. I went to Lowe's yesterday and I got a ton of sweet basil and pesto basil plants. But yeah, I went to Lowe's yesterday to pick this all up because I knew obviously I would need all of this or at least most of it for today. So while I'm prepping, I wanted to share with you guys some very interesting information that me and my husband discovered yesterday for whatever reason. Last night we were literally just having this random conversation about like waste and the waste that people create and we were thinking like I don't think a lot of people actually know what happens to their waste like after they throw it in the trash. I think a lot of people when they throw things in the trash they just think like all of their trash goes to this magical fairy tale place and just magically disappears. So we took it upon ourselves to investigate via YouTube exactly where our trash goes when it gets thrown away and boy oh boy we learned some interesting things. Things. I'm honestly a little bit traumatized by what I saw by what I saw last night. So I'm going to, while I'm prepping, explain to you guys exactly what we saw in these documentaries and be sure you guys, if you haven't already, to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like this video and leave a nice comment in the comment section. Just check in with me and let me know how you're doing. YouTube is definitely something I'm trying to get better with incorporating into my schedule and this is an example of me doing that today. I'm squeezing this video in while I cook. So I'm doing it where I can, when I can, and I love it. I love being on YouTube. So I'm happy to have you guys here. Now, for those documentaries last night, we watched two documentaries last night, okay, on YouTube. And if you guys wanna see these documentaries, leave me a comment in the comment section down below and I will make sure that you guys get access to watching those documentaries because they absolutely blew my mind. So here it is, let's go. So documentary number one was based out of New York City. And this one was the highlight of both documentaries. So I'm gonna walk you through like the day-to-day -day journey of where waste goes from in the morning when it's picked up by the trash can man to the end of its little waste life. So in New York City, the trash men, I'm gonna call them the trash men. They wake up every day, they head to work and they get in their trash mobile and they start riding around New York City. And for those of you who have been to New York, you guys know that people in New York City, since it's so compact, they literally just put their trash bags on the street, which is very alarming for those that did not grow up in the city to see that. <laughs> And so the trash men basically go around the city and they pick up people's trash and they put it all in their little trash truck. Now, once they've collected all their trash from their section of the city, they then take it from there and they put it on these huge cargo, like sea train ship things and they basically ship it to another borough in New York City. And then once the boats arrive at the port with all the trash, they ride at like a warehouse. And you guys, I've never seen a warehouse this big filled with trash. It's literally an entire, if you could picture this in your mind, it's an entire warehouse packed to the freaking top full of trash. It's crazy to see that. And in that warehouse, there's like these huge claws. You guys know those like claw games that you play at the carnival where you pay and then the little claw you try to catch a toy. There's these humongous claws that go and move around the warehouse and they just randomly pick up these huge piles of trash. Each claw can pick up one truck's worth of trash. And they literally take that trash and they put it in like this huge incinerator. So New York City, they burn all the trash there in New York City. And of course, I did not know that. I'm not a native New Yorkian. I had no idea what they did with their trash, let alone why they do what they do with their trash. So I learned from this documentary last night from in the early 1900s when people first started immigrating to New York City and they started to build the city, there was no waste management. There was no sanitation council in New York that took care of the trash and took care of keeping the city clean. So it was all up to the residents of New York City. They would literally just take their trash to the harbor and just dump it into the ocean. Can you believe that? I'm talking about from the early 1900s to the 1980s, people were just dumping all of their trash into the ocean. Until one day somebody came about and woke up and was like, hey, we can't keep dumping our trash in the ocean. And to whoever that person is, God, I mean, if you're still alive, Hallelujah. Thank God for your soul. Some genius came up with the idea of not dumping the water into the ocean and exploding their oceans and instead taking the trash and incinerating it and using the burning trash to fuel the entire city's energy grid off of the trash that the citizens of New York City create. Can you guys believe that? They literally take the trash that the people living in New York City produce, burn it to then produce energy to fuel the entire city. 
So let me just go over the process with you, like what it looks like. So they take all the trash, they take it through the incinerators, they burn everything. And then at the very end, there is still some waste left behind, things like metal, steel, certain things that just will not burn, and obviously the ash that gets left behind. So what happens is, once everything is done in the incinerator, they put it on these huge conveyor belts, and basically everything is moving on this conveyor belt, and there's a magnet working backwards and going back over the conveyor belt, and the magnet is picking up all the leftover sheet metal, steel, any metal scraps that get left behind. Guys, they pick up the metal off the conveyor belt and use the metal to create 21,000 cars. And they didn't give us like a timeline of how often they're creating these cars with the leftover scrap metal, but they made it seem like they have enough metal that they produce every day to produce 21,000 cars per day. That's how it was depicted to me in the documentary. I don't know, maybe I didn't hear things right, but that, that is freaking cool. I was very, very proud to hear that. I would have, I would have never have guessed that coming out of New York. So shout out to all the people living in New York City who are watching this video. Your trash is now fueling your city. That was documentary number one. And after watching New York's documentary of what they do with their trash, obviously my husband and I were curious about what they're doing in California where we live and what we're doing with our trash. We decided to watch the documentary on what they do with the waste produced in Orange County. And for those of you who don't know what Orange County or where Orange County is, it's about 45 minutes out of LA. It's more commonly known for being the home of Disneyland. A lot of people who don't live in California don't actually know that Disneyland is not in LA. Universal Studios is in LA, but Disneyland is actually in Orange County in a town called Anaheim. 45 minutes outside of LA. So that's where this documentary was based off of is the area that Disneyland is in. And my husband and I just so happened to both live in that area. Uh, we didn't know each other at the time, but we were living there. So I, him and I definitely played into this issue of what I'm going to tell you about what they do with their trash in Orange County. So this documentary, I was on a high from the New York one and then went to a low really, really quickly. So let me walk you through the daily schedule of a trash man in Orange County. So typically the trash people, they wake up, they go to work, they get in their little trash mobiles and they start driving around the city to collect people's trash. After they've collected all the trash from all the locals, they then transfer it from their trash truck to diesel trucks. The diesel trucks then drive <laughs> this trash to an unknown location. They obviously didn't say it in the documentary, but the way California is the huge state, okay? It's not like New York City by any means. Everything is very spread out. There is dirt fields for miles and miles and miles. There's desert land, there's beaches, there's forest land. We got it all. And Orange County just so happens to be in that like really, really dry, boring area. Area. in between LA and San Diego. Orange County is like kind of in between where nothing really is. All these diesel trucks basically drive over to that land where that nothing land is basically. And they wait in these huge lines. And then after they have been given the clearance to drive in, they literally drive in. And I want you guys to picture this and I'll put some photos up on the screen of what was depicted in the documentary, but if you guys could just imagine this with me for a second, literally imagine yourself at the Grand Canyon, right? And you're standing on, like up, right? And the canyon is below you. Imagine standing there and everything below you in that canyon is full of garbage, you guys. <laughs> I was, my husband and I both looked at each other like, what? They literally take the trash. They have dug huge holes out in the desert areas of Orange County. Huge, like hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of feet down into the ground and literally have been burying our trash there for years. You guys, what they do is they, the trucks one by one, they come up, they dump the trash, dump it all out on the ground. At the end of the day, once all the trucks have come through and dropped off all their garbage, another like tractor, flattening tractor comes by and like rolls through and flattens and lays all the trash out. God forbid it's not even. Evens all the trash out, lays a plastic tarp over it and then covers it up with dirt. And then the next day, wake up, and do it again. Something that I found very interesting that one of the mega landfill workers, cause that's what they call it there, they call it the mega landfill. One of the managers there at the mega landfill said that trash stops for no man. This literally happens every single day. And the problem that they're running into is they're running out of space. They're running out of land space. What's happening is the other areas where they've been burying our trash are now all surface level and even ground. What's happening is they've filled up all of the land already and now they're trying to project in like blueprint how they can build freaking artificial mountains out of our trash, you guys. And you know what's interesting? It's so hazardous out there for the workers. Like the workers were talking about, you know, how they get sick. Obviously, you know, you're around other people's trash, they get sick, they deal with different things. Uh, they can't even smell how horrible it smells up there anymore. They all wear masks no matter what. They all are always wearing masks. And what happens is, is that these trucks are coming in so fast sometimes they can't keep up. And since people don't know how to properly throw their trash away and recycle certain things like electronics, in one of the segments of the documentary, 
a manager literally picked up a keyboard out of the pile of trash. Say for example, if I would have never caught this piece of keyboard, the circuits inside the board if it was a hot day or if something crashed against it or broke it or if there's a lighter somewhere in this mix, if something were to set it off and it were to become flammable, it would be an entire shit show here. Basically everything would go up in flames and that kind of scared me, it made me nervous. And then like within two seconds later, some other guy was like, hey, I found a propane tank, like a whole propane tank. Somebody threw away their propane tank into the trash can. So I guess this is just a warning for all of us to remember to properly recycle your electronics. You guys, please do not throw those things in the trash. So yeah. Those are the two eco documentaries that we watched quickly last night on a whim, being curious, very, very proud of New York. Shout out to New York's sanitation department. As far as Orange County goes, we need to do better here. That is absolutely un- acceptable. We're maxing out our land space, our precious land space. California has some of the most fertile soil in the entire world. We're just maxing out that area with garbage, completely ruining the soil, ruining the land. There's nothing you can do. Once it's there, it's there. You can't just, where are you going to take it and remove it and put it where? So anyways, that just made me very sad and nervous, but more importantly, more motivated to keep doing what I'm doing because if we all lower the amount of trash that we produce, we won't even have things like landfills and we won't need to burn trash for electricity because nobody will be producing any trash in a perfect world, right? Anyways, those are the documentaries. I'm going to get to cooking because we are now on a time crunch. I have about an hour. So I love you guys. I will pick up with you guys in a couple minutes. Enjoy this little montage, a little pesto making montage, and I'll check back with you guys when we have the final product. the final product, literally a huge, gigantic pot of pesto. Oh my God. I have a fork here. I'm gonna do a taste test with you guys. Sorry that I'm rushing. We are late, of course, but that's okay. Cheers. Oh my God, I'm so excited. That turned out beautifully. That turned out so good. Oh my gosh. I will for sure link the recipe in the description section down below. I am so excited. I was a little bit nervous, but I'm so excited for everyone to try my little contribution to tonight's uh, family game night. Anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you didn't get too blown away or discouraged by the <laughs> little documentaries that I shared earlier. I think if there's anything to take away from that situation is to try to solve the problem before it becomes a problem. So solution before problem would be to lower our personal waste index that these landfills and the incinerators and the global waste trade agreement where we ship our trash to other countries would cease to exist. So just remember to do what you can this week, next week, and for the rest of your days to try to lower the amount of waste that you produce. You guys can do that by going and shopping. In my shop, my zero waste shop has everything that you can need. All the zero waste goodies from your kitchen to your bathroom to just your everyday lifestyle items. So be sure to check out my shop in the description section down below. You could sign up and give me your email and then you get 10% off your first purchase. All the good stuff will be linked in the description section down below. I love you guys. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and I will see you all in a video very soon. I love you guys. See ya.